back with you guys this morning. Um, I'll get into it a little bit more in detail, I guess, in a little bit. But, um, I've been doing, at my house, uh, we built on the, basically, the third shelf up, if you will, or the third flat on the road. And so the first two flats, every year before football, I hit it with a weed eater and just try to get it all knocked down. Uh, it would be a real good idea to have a tractor and a brush hog, but there's a bunch of rocks and stuff on there, and my, and my uncle would come and do it. Uncle-in-law, <laughs> Gail's uncle, would come and do it, but he tore up his a couple things on his tractor. He's like, I'd really like to help you, but sorry, understandable. <clears throat> so I'm going to be coughing this morning. I do not have the Rona. It's just all that. Um, you guys could laugh. It's just, it's just a joke. But I don't have, I, it's just all, you know, I've been weed eating for, it, it, I don't know, I, I don't know how many acres it is. It's is acres. It is. I'm not kidding. It's acres that I weed eat. And it takes me the, the better part of a week, if not more, and uh, it's a lot. And I go, I take care of my responsibilities in the day. I hit it in the evening, get four or five hours of weed eating in, and it's all week long. And it's just a long time to get all that done. So, um, last Friday night, I'll go ahead and tell that. I was going to save this for a little bit. I'll go ahead and tell you now since I'm already halfway into it. Uh, Friday evening, I was, believe it or not, weed eating. And um, my Luke ended up going with my father-in-law down to my brother-in-law's house who lives down on the hill from us. And, and I had an old weed eater down there in their building because that's where we used to live before we built this house up on the hill. And uh, so he was in there messing around and he got it running. So Luke decided, hey, you know, I'm going to weed eat too. Okay, which, you know, okay. So uh, that was Friday night. It was almost dark. So um, yesterday, of course, it rained the better part of the day. And uh, didn't get a start on it like I wanted to. Or I, was, I was planning on weed eating the entire day yesterday. I didn't get a start to the afternoon because of the rain and things. But Luke weeded. I mean, this kid, he's nine years old. I figured, you know. Sure, buddy, go weed eat. I'm going to have to go behind you and fix it, whatever. And he did great. He did about four hours worth of weed eating yesterday, and he just did an awesome job, and, and I was impressed with, with him. I mean, obviously, he's my kid, and I don't want to be bragging on him, but he's, he did a great job. My dad came by and helped. My brother-in-law came up and helped. We actually got it done yesterday. We actually got the whole thing, and I wasn't expecting to because just with the rain and stuff, you know, but, but we actually finished that thing up there right at dark, Got into a yellow jacket's nest. Got my got stung on the knees. I was wearing this pair of camouflage pants had a big hole in the knee of it. Well, that's they found that hole in the knee. How do they do that? You know, anyway, they did. And I got stung on the knees, and and so we sprayed it with some stuff, and we came back right at dark when we were finishing and finished that last little part up. We never got stung again. So, but anyway, we got it done. So I was glad for that. But I'll probably reference that a little bit later in the. In the message, we're in Matthew chapter five, starting with verse thirteen. Now, I've used portions of this the, this uh, passage before to preach from. Um, I don't know why this is, was on my heart again. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you um, how long ago it was since I preached on this. I know that I've preached it, it again from this passage before. I hope to bring out some different things from it today. But um, I figured if I can't remember, you probably can't either. So, <laughs> so uh, anyway, God put it on my heart again. I'm going to I'm going to share it with you. It says Matthew chapter five, chapter five verse thirteen it says, "You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor or savor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown or be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden." Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. And you look back, um, starting with verse 13, it says that you, this is Jesus speaking, uh, but again, as I've said so often, um, when God speaks, it's for those who... Uh, before he spoke, for those he's speaking to, and for all those he <laughs> comes along after. That's how powerful the word of God is. And Jesus here is saying, 
you are the salt of the earth. Well, that means we are as well. We are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor or its savor, how shall it how shall it be seasoned? Now we know that salt is a, is a, is a seasoning, as, you know that that we put on food to enhance the taste. Now here's an interesting little funny story about this. So earlier this week, one of the nights that I we needed till dark, and came into the house. Um, Gail had some had food and uh, some pork chops actually. And uh, she had a plate there ready for me, and I looked around, and the salt shaker was behind me. It's a weird spot. I was like, that's weird. So I picked up the salt shaker, put the salt on my food, set it down back where it was because it was in a weird place. I didn't, you know, but I set it back down there. When I ate my food, and uh, when I got finished, Gail said, was your food good? Well, of course, the answer to that is it was amazing, and it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, you could... <laughs> But you can tell you, you can tell from looking at me that I'm not hurting from meals, you know. It's like, you know, Gail's, Gail's a good cook. I said, yeah, yeah, it was really good. She's like, did your food have enough salt? Was it salted well? I was like, yeah, I mean, normal. She's like, well, did you realize that the salt shaker was sitting there because I washed it and there was no salt in it? And you <laughs> used the shaker and put it on your food, but nothing came out? And she's like, so evidently it's a habit and my food salted enough anyway, you know. It's like, well, that's a good point because now I didn't notice that. I mean, you know, in my defense, I was really tired, but yeah. I used an empty salt shaker <laughs> and thought, thought the food was great. You know, so evidently I don't need to salt the food. Uh, that was that was Gail's point. But, you know, as I was thinking about that, <coughs> excuse me, as I was thinking about that um, and, you know, relating it to the, the church, you know, it says we're the salt of the earth. Now, salt um, provides flavor and it also... Um, helps in preserving, okay? Keeps things fresher longer, okay? And if, if the salt loses its savor or its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Now, that, I think, is something that we really need to take a, a look at in our, in, in, as the body of Christ today, because it says it is then <clears throat> good for nothing. It's just to be thrown out and trampled under the foot of men. We need to make sure, as the body of Christ, that we're still providing a little bit of flavor and a little bit of perseverance, right? A little bit of uh, uh, lasting qualities within the world we live in. Because I believe, uh, you know, and, and again, speaking as a whole, as the body of Christ, you know, if, if, um, if, if, if this COVID-19, this coronavirus would have, would have, happened maybe even 20 years ago, but certainly 30 or 40 years ago, and they told people you're not allowed to go to church. Can you imagine the riots? And you talk about we have riots. There would be people just saying, no, you know, the, you know what I mean? Like people would, people wouldn't just have accepted that. Okay. You know, they wouldn't. Uh, used to be, you would have a revival and there would be people sitting outside the church because it was too full, and God would be moving, and people, you wouldn't have to post it everywhere. People would just say, here, we're having a revival, and people would show, remember we talked about in this church how many people were baptized in the winter one year when we thought we had a big number here. We started looking through the church history, and it was like, what, 12 in December or something? Or no, I can't remember. January or something? Remember that? I mean, and that wasn't a heated pool. I was in this creek out here, okay? I mean, but what, what was happening was God was moving and people wanted to be where God was moving. When, and I've, I've shared this many times. When Jesus was on the earth, he didn't have billboards that said, Jesus is speaking at six, everyone show up with flashing lights and arrows. He just sat down and started talking about God and the Spirit of God would move and people would just show up, Okay? You can't get people in the church these days. And why is that? I believe it's because the body of Christ is starting to lose its flavor. We're just going through the motions. We're just doing our thing. It's just, you know, you, you do your thing. You be you. I'll be me. God's, yeah, God's involved, but there's really no, no substance to it. There's no perseverance to it. There's no flavor to it. It's just a routine. There's it's, too much imitation, so... 
Boom. <laughs> Imitation salt. Or it's taking that empty salt shaker and going through the motions, but there's real, no real salt there. See? When God is truly involved, people show up. We don't have to uh, do a lot of crazy things as if we just let God be the focus and the center and let God's spirit move. That's what draws people in. That's what people need. Okay? So, that's, uh, you know, and as I think about that, and as I think about the body of Christ and the situation of our world and our society today, I do believe that, that's the, that we, we are getting to the point, we're getting dangerously close to the point that Jesus was warning us about here, that if the salt is losing its flavor... There's really no reason to have it around anymore. It just gets thrown out and trampled under the feet of men. Okay? And unfortunately today, like I said, uh, you know, people can say, ah, well, times are different. People change. And sure, things change. I get that. But, but the, the thing is that God is still the same. And if we <clears throat> let him... If we let him show in, in the things that we do as the body of Christ, people will show up. Because there's still that empty void in each and every human being that the only thing it can be filled with is the love of God and the Spirit of God and the peace of God and that's what everyone is searching for and we have it and why in the world would we not share it? You know? Which gets us to the next, ne the next portion of this uh, which is uh, I'm sorry, verse 14 of this passage. So we're the salt of the earth. In other words, we're supposed to be, we need to be bringing some flavor. Now, as I was telling you about it in, this, in, in my weed eating story, I mean, I don't know, uh, I, I have a pretty decent sized weed eater because if you're going to do something like that, you better have one, a, a, something you can use, you know, a big thing, right? Uh, and I, I was using, but I had this, the biggest string I thought I, at this store I thought I could buy, the biggest stuff. It's like a big old square looking, so I could barely get it in there. It was just so big and thick, you know, could barely get into the head of the weed eater. And I was using it, and I was running out of string before I was running out of gas. That's how thick some of the stuff was that I was cutting on. I think the problem was when COVID-19 hit back there in mid-March, I went ahead and just cut it. I cut it twice a year. Cut it once at the beginning of the spring and once right before football. That's just kind of how I do it. And before, you know, once... This COVID thing hit, instead of cutting it in May, I cut it in March, in the middle of, or the end of March. Well, then we had a real wet spring, and some of this stuff was, I mean, there was, this is like eight feet tall, this big around. Dad dad came over yesterday to help me, said, this isn't weed eating, this is tree trimming. That's what he was talking about. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was just some tough stuff to get through, and just eating a bunch of string and stuff. And by, uh, you know, and I've been doing this, this I literally was weeding until 9 o'clock at night. There was one night where I had a, I wanted to be done with a certain section, like Thursday night, I had a booster club meeting, had to run to and came back, and I wanted to be done with that by Thursday. And I was literally out there weeding, and I couldn't, honestly, I didn't know if I was finished or not by the time I got done. It was so dark, like, but I wanted to be trying to be done with that one spot. And I was working at it, and then by Saturday, I got up and, and, you know, Luke was kind of fired up to help, and then it was raining, pouring the rain down and stuff, you know, and it's just, I was just kind of disappointed, defeated a little bit, you know, it's just like, I told you, I was like, I'm so sick of weed eating, because I knew that if I didn't get it done this week, you know, football practice starts Monday, and I've got just a few days there, because after, after next week, teachers start at our school, start reporting back on August the 24th, and that means I go to school at 7.30 in the morning, and then after football practice and whatnot, Dad knows how this goes, but I'm not home till 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. There's no chance to weed eat at that point. Once you start doing that, it's over. Like Saturday is the only day you got, and it, it'd take me about, you know, the, the rest of the fall, I guess, on Saturday training. So I was just trying to, you know, I was defeated and feeling down, you know. No, I wasn't pouting or anything, because I don't do that. <laughs> but, but I was just kind of like, well, I guess I'll go get it. It finally stopped raining about 3 o'clock in my house. And I said, well, I guess I'll go see what I can do here. You know, try to get something done. So I'm down there. We didn't. Luke said, you want me to come help you now? I said, well, do you just wait and see what the weather's going to do? Because at that point, it's kind of iffy. It looked like it could take off raining any second again. So you just hold on and see what the weather's going to do. So I'm down there, and Luke starts hollering from the house, hey. He said, what? He said, 
Papa's on the phone. He wants to know if you want some help. I said, well, if he wants to come down, that'd be great. Luke said, okay. And then so Luke came down. My dad showed up. And then my brother-in-law came over. And all, boy, you talk about some salt. <laughs> they were my salt. I mean, because it went from me there Saturday going, oh, this is going to take forever. So people started showing up with weed ears in hand. We had four weed ears going at once. I'm like, yeah, we might just get this done. And all of a sudden, I'm like, yeah! You know, and I'm going crazy. It's like, you know, just going at it. Weeds are flying, and I inhaled half of it. That's why I'm coughing today. <laughs> I just got about a minute. We were going at it. Yellow Jackets Nest, about 8 o'clock, hit one of those, and we were so close to being done. I got stung about three or four times on each knee. <laughs> I don't know how they only got me in the knees, but that's it. And I was like, oh, and my brother-in-law was like, well, you want to go on the other side? We'll work our way back, so we'll spray it down. So perfect, so we, I mean, we got it done, you know? And, and, but they provided that energy for me, that light, that, that salt, right? They gave me some flavor. Unfortunately, today in our churches, a lot of times we're like me Saturday before people showed up. Wow. I'm just going to do this, you know? Oh, let's go to church again. <laughs> yeah, praise God. <laughs> you know, we've, we're losing our flavor. We're losing. But, but the problem is it's not God's fault. Amen. It's not God's fault. God has not changed. The power that used to draw people in from all over every hillside and holler within a shouting distance of a revival is still with us. The problem is we're losing our flavor. We're just going through the motions, imitation salt, empty salt shakers, just, you know, just letting things go when we need to be really focused on bringing in the light, which is, again, the next, the next verse. So you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We are getting to the point in our society where, and the Bible mentions this, in the last days, wrong will be right and right will be wrong. The Bible says that. We are about to that point. Because when you start standing on the Word of God, believing in God, and trusting in God and trying to persuade others to do so, all of a sudden you're closed-minded and you're not uh, you, you, you're, you're not able to. Uh, how do I want to say this? Uh, you, you're closed-minded and you're you're not um, considering others' feelings. You might you're you're you're, you're offensive to some people. And if you start saying there's only one way to heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ. If you say that, thank you, brother. If you say that, then you're considered to be just a a, 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 a radical, a closed-minded, just you know, radical. You can you can't say that. Well, you'd be offending, you know, other religions if you say that. You see what I mean? And we as the church just kind of go along. Okay, sorry, didn't mean to offend anybody. You know. Invitation salt, right? And this light that we have in this world, if we ever needed a light, folks, right now, we need a light, okay? Um, I was listening to uh, some sportscasters talk this week at some point on the radio, and, and, and they were talking about how some of these kids, like in the Big Ten and the Pac-12, like just their mental health, they're worried about because these kids have got, you know, got their season taken away, and, and uh, it, which all that really doesn't make any sense to me, because you've got 18 to 22-year-olds in a place where there's doctors and testing and care and practice and a vision and a, a, trying to achieve something, and then you're going to say, sorry guys, we're not going to do that anymore, see you later. What do you think 18 to 22? Do you think 18 to 22 year olds are going to go home and social distance, and or have the care that they had in school? That's that's really I just don't get it from the Big Ten and the fact. But whatever, that's another day. That's for another topic. But but my point is is like you know 
these kids, are, they're getting their, you know, life's just getting, you know, I, I worry about even our season and our seniors. See, I'm not worried about me because there'll be other seasons. I'll have other seasons at some point, right? But these seniors won't. This is it. And if it gets taken from them, you know, it's just how do you deal with that? And some of these kids, you know, <clears throat> there are kids that, that, that Gail is, is really concerned about because since March the 11th of last school year, they've not had contact with some of these kids. They've not heard from them. They've gone to the house. No one will answer the door. Like you, you worried about that these kids are even getting the, the meals they need, right? You know? And, and, and that's the thing about, you know, even in the summertime, in, in a county like ours, the school still provides food for kids because they just don't get what they need at their houses. A lot of them don't. So, you, you know, it, it's, it's kind of one of these things where what, is, what are these kids dealing with? What are they going through? Sometimes a school is the safest place they can be, a lot of kids, you know? And you're worried about the mental health of people. And, 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 and all of us, when, you're, when your normal life gets messed up and you're going through uh, all this stuff, and, and I, I'm getting so tired of the, the term, your new normal, the new norm. I'm getting so tired of hearing that. <laughs> like, give me back my normal, you know? <laughs> uh, but, you know, that. but when you start... Deal with dealing with all these things, and, and, and it, it's just this seems like there's just darkness everywhere you turn, doom and gloom. There's a light. There is a light that always shines. Okay, and we know this. We've discussed this before, but I find it interesting to to think about. You know, sometimes. The Bible tells us we should meditate on the things of God. And to me, what that means is sometimes I just sit and think. I know you guys are shocked by that. But sometimes I do. I just sit and think about stuff, like God stuff. Just And one of the things that my mind always kind of goes to is this whole darkness versus light thing. Okay? Because you think about it, this is just one of those... You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know this, okay? But I think about this a lot. You can't make darkness dark enough to where a light won't penetrate it and make it light. In fact, the darker the darkness is, the brighter the light appears to be. All right? If you think about that, though, you can't take you can't take darkness, though, and make it so dark that it overtakes a light that's shining. It's just one of those rules of way that things work. You see what I mean? The darkest darkness you can come up with, you take a light into it, and the light overtakes the darkness. A light shining, you take darkness into it, and guess what happens? The light shines. You see what I'm saying? So, in this world that we're in right now, we're supposed to be the light, and there's not enough darkness in this world that can ever overtake the light that shines within us, if we let it shine. If we let it shine. <clears throat> now more than ever, we need to let this light shine. Jesus said, you know, you're the light of the world. He says the city is set on a hill, can't be hidden. In other words, you know, can you imagine trying to hide like New York City? Trying to hide it? How? It's, it's impossible. Okay? So, it can't be hidden. Nor do, they, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Now this, the other night, Luke and I were, I forget, in our backyard, he saw some, he, we were, it was dark outside. And he wanted to go outside and look at these bushes in the backyard because he said that they were blackberry, but there were blackberries in our backyard in these bushes. I said, no, they're not. They're just bright, son. There's no, there's no blackberries. On. And we sit there and argued for five minutes. I said, get a flashlight. I'll go show you. You know, because I was tired of arguing with him. And so he, he said, okay. Said, well, I made the mistake of letting him have the flashlight. Because then you for that. Yeah, I know. So we're outside. He's got the flashlight. We're trying to walk around the house. Now, again, this is summertime. You know, I, when, where we built our house, I told you it was the third flat up. And what we did was we just cut down a bunch of trees in the woods and made a yard. I mean, you know, it's grass now, but we live in the middle of the woods, okay? I mean, it's nice. you got to be really serious about coming to see us because it's up a hill. you got to come around and turn, and I love it because if, if, you if you're not serious, you're not coming up there. 
We used to get Jehovah's Witnesses down at the house at the bottom of the hill. We don't get nobody now. Not one. Our, my mother-in-law barely comes up. I mean, it's just, it, it's up there. It's secluded. It's great. Once you get up there, you can look around and just, you got all God's beauty and no people. It's, it's not. <laughs> right? Is that a house for sale? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But my, my point is we're in the middle of the woods, so look, we're walking around the house, so I kind of want to have a light on the ground because you just never know, right? Well, I made the mistake of letting Luke carry the flashlight. And of course, you know, that's how, he, that's how we're going around the house. Luke's looking in trees and they're shining on it. I said, son, put the light on the ground. You can't see. So I do. And then like three steps, guess what? Ooh, you know, he's looking everywhere else. And a lot of times, we kind of do the same thing, though, as Christians. We have a light and we need to let it shine. But a lot of times we're just, we, we don't put it where we need to put it. We're just kind of stumbling around in the darkness. You know, it, it's about like having a spotlight, like a big old... Have you ever been on a stage where they've got one of those spotlights? Like at school or something? Oh my goodness. It's like a train's coming right at you. You can't see anything but this ball of light. And you can... It's sitting in the back of the... At our high school, it sits in the back of a huge auditorium. And you can feel the heat off that thing. As soon as it hits you from that far away, and the sweat just starts coming, and, and you can't see anything but that light, which, you know, that's sometimes a blessing. <laughs> you know? But anyway, that, but it's, it's, it's just this huge light. And sometimes, as the body of Christ, we stumble around and mumble around and fumble around, and we've got one of those, those stage lights, that we could just, all we got to do is flip the switch and whoo, just light up, you know, light up your world. Like the 4th of July kind of thing, right? That kind of power, but yet we, sometimes we just don't use, we just try to stumble along and mumble along like everybody else. We need to right now, more than ever, in this world that we're living in, going through the things that we're going through, verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The way that we can be a witness, in closing, the way that we can be a witness, the most effective way that we can be a witness for God in this day and time is to not have any fear and to not have, and while everyone else is sitting around grumbling and complaining, which I'm guilty of doing the same thing with all the stuff we're dealing with, but if we can show them we have hope, in the future, if we can show them that we believe that God is in control and we're not going to worry about things and we can show people that, not just say that, but show people that, that's when people start saying, well, there's something different about that person. What is it? I'd like to know what, they, what they've got that I don't. You know? That's, that's how we can be that effective witness and that light right now in this world <laughs> that we're living in. We need to let the light of God shine through us and in us so that we can bring back some of that salt uh, that, of God and have some flavor and some perseverance and let that light shine through us so that other people are saying, you know, I want what they've got. Because the last thing I'll say in closing is, are we living our life as close to God's where other people would desire to have what we want? Or would they look at our lives and say, why would I get up and go into a building when I could sleep in, just to be bored out of my mind. And you see what I'm saying? Like, we got to make sure that we let the love and the power of God shine through us so other people wouldn't want it. Amen? God bless you this morning. Father, your father in law, I just buy you a goat. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, yeah. No. I told him.